Okay, it is now um, 11.20, and so I resume the hearing. If I could ask that you take a seat, please, um, preferably your own. Okay, thank you. Um, just before picking up from where we left off, um, one point on housekeeping um, for me. I don't know who I should look to on the council side in the first instance, but um, yes, um, you mentioned um, that um, the evidence in terms of the um, meeting notes, um, uh, etc., cetera, um, weren't, weren't complete and that you would provide those. Um, which I'd be grateful for, um, and, but perhaps just on the housekeeping point, um, if the council keeps um, a running list of homework um, and uh, puts that on as the first item. Yep. Um, are there any other housekeeping or, or other similar points to pick up on before we continue? Mr. Bamba. Yes, uh, thanks, sir. Um, I'm uh, acting on behalf of Save Rural Codicott um, and particularly looking at the transport issues. But there was a, 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 a single point on the soundness issue that I would like to raise when it gets to that point. Certainly, yes. Mr. Roberts, is this a, a housekeeping type point? It is, yes. And um, I suppose it comes back to my point that we're raised that the, the council hadn't included discussions with the mayor within that list but now they say that it is a strategic issue so it was one i was wondering whether there is any documentation like we see for education which which supports that it, it was just a, a wider point if there is can we see that um and if it's already there just direct me to it really that was all. Uh, can we can we help mr roberts out D does Mr. Roberts want the um, the record of the meeting with um, between Mr. Lee and the GLA? Is that what you're asking for? Or Just m m yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Lee will be attending in matter three. Um, he's ORS, so I'm sure that he can we can make provision for whatever took place. Yeah. Okay. Um, f for my part, I'm. I'm sufficiently content to park that point um, and, until then um, and I'm, I'm sure should I forget it Mr Roberts you'll remind me okay thank you um, it's Ms. Ms. Gray um, isn't it if we if we um, if we hear from um, the, uh, the the county council where did uh, where did your discussions lead you Thank you, sir, and I'm most grateful for um, you giving us the opportunity to confer in the break. Um, there are just a couple of points that we wish to raise. Um, one is that we were pleased that you um, have requested the additional items of evidence from the council that they referred to in their opening statement. And in fact, that's something that was on our list too, so I can cross that one off. Um, just on a point of fact, um, we uh, note that the planning permission for the Great Ashby site at the decision notice at the back is 23rd of April 2010. Three years from that date takes us to the 23rd of April 2013, and it was in November 2012, sir, that HCC made the first request that the site be retained for secondary school use through an allocation in the local plan. So it's, it's our consideration that there was an extant permission when discussions opened between the two councils regarding secondary education provision. The second point that we just wish to raise is in respect of the um, one FE to 500 um, dwellings. Uh, child yield. If, if uh, it's possible to make a point of clarification on that, I appreciate that it is for um, Thursday's decision, you know, discussion really, but we have already touched on it this morning, so I thought it might be helpful just to read from the County Council's representations in that respect. So um, the one, to f one FE to 500 dwellings is set out in Appendix 1 of the County Council's representation of November 2016. 
And um, just to clarify, one form entry of child yield per 500 dwellings is 42 children per 100 dwellings, or 210 children from 500 dwellings. My, my apologies, if you, if you bear with me. Shall so, I sorry, just repeat you, that again? Yes, if you would, I'd be okay. grateful. Okay, okay. So, um, but it's set out in Appendix 1 of the County Council's representations, November 2016, at paragraphs 1.13 to 1.18. And in respect of the 1FE to 500 requirements, yeah. it is one form of entry of child yield per 500 dwellings. That is 42 children per 100 dwellings or 210 children from 500 dwellings. There are 30 places per year group primary school has seven year groups. Sorry, bear with me. So um, I have the point, there are 30 places per year group. Um, a primary school has seven year groups, reception and years one to six. And so seven classes of 30 children equates to 210 places. And, and we say this merely to just clarify <coughs> the particular point that was raised by the, the council this morning. And if, if um, you would like further information on, the, on that, then I can ask my colleague to, uh, client to um, give further evidence on that. But I think it's largely going to be a matter for discussion on Thursday yes. when the education authority are present. Yes, I mean, that, that, that's quite helpful. It helps me to understand yeah. um, the calculation. Um, I, I think there's um, a question about whether the numbers that have gone into it are, are the right ones, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that another time. Thank you very much. Um, we've, we've considered all of the matters that have been raised by the Council, and we've got nothing further to add from our statement, which we consider to be comprehensive and setting out the County Council's position in respect of the duty to cooperate. Um, it is the County Council's view they wish to leave it with the inspector yourself, sir, to, to form a view as to whether or not there has been constructive cooperation across the period that has led um, to an effective revision policy, which clearly there hasn't been. There's the soundness principle of it, soundness issue there, but clearly, um, you know, it's for you to decide whether duty to cooperate has been complied with. We have nothing further to add to our statements. Just so I'm clear, um, notwithstanding um, what um, you've you've heard this morning, um, you, you remain of the view, do you, um, that the duty to cooperate has not been met? Yes, that is the County Council's position, yeah. having discussed it with my client. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anything that the Council wants to say on that? Okay. Um, anything else from anyone else on the duty to cooperate in relation to education? Okay. Um, I'm afraid, Mr. Goatley, that Mr. Kima was a, a little quicker um, on, on the trigger than, than, than you were uh, on, that in, on, on that instance. Um, Mr. Kima. Um, as, as is known, my, my client's picture own um, GA2 um, discussions about having a school on that site started, believe it or not, in 2006. Um, that was when the um, concept was for um, four or 5,000 houses being located at North East Stevenage as part of the massive expansion of Stevenage out into North Arts. And uh, as um, my colleague from Vincent and Gorbing said, that, that resulted in a planning permission back in 2010 but that was very much in the context of a four or 5,000 house development. Um, we, we, we haven't liaised um, in detail or negotiated ha um, housing numbers, sorry, school places with Hertfordshire County Council because we very much really liaised with North Hertfordshire. As I've explained to you, I was involved in Great Ashby 
um, phases one, two, th well, since about 1985. I've seen the county council close secondary schools um, just when Great Ashley was starting up. Um, we've seen the county council today having a very substantial um, vacancy spaces uh, around the town. And it's difficult to assume that they are automatically right, which is why we have taken um, professional advice from EPDS, which I'm not qualified to um, discuss, but they will present to you John Powell on um, Thursday on matter six. But it's also mentioned somewhere that, um, that North Hertfordshire didn't facilitate meetings with the landowners. In, in, in fact, um, the county council contacted me, the education authority, and um, we did meet them in December 2015 and again in September 2016. At that time, they were still saying that they wanted an eight FE school, a really large school, which we know the site can't accommodate in, in traffic terms. And we've left the situation and the discussions to North Arts, and we've taken a back seat and will continue to do so other than John Powell talking to you on Thursday. <coughs> Mr. Goatley. Thank you. Having reserved my position uh, earlier, I think it's only appropriate to say that I have nothing substantive to add to that which Ms. Ormsby has, in my respectful uh, submission to you, has very fully and very clearly set out dealing with the issue on duty to cooperate, which is a distinct, uh, discreet, and high level requirement as to whether, in fact, there has been constructive engagement. Um, just to deal with a, uh, a simple aphorism on this, which is that a duty to cooperate is not a duty to agree. Um, but that duty um, to cooperate uh, involves that process of engagement rather than simply uh, effectively failing to engage in matters you've got the chronology, you have the detailed references, I don't propose to add to those. So far as the other matters relating to the ratio and how that is met, whether in one or more than one location, those really are matter six matters relating going to soundness, not matters that go to duty to cooperate. So I would respectfully say nothing has been identified or heard before you today that indicates that there has been any substantive failure on the part of the District Council with regards to duty to cooperate in bringing forward this plan. Thank you, Mr. Gately. Um, and anything else on um, education and the duty to cooperate? Um, before I let in um, people that wanted to talk about um, other aspects, other strategic matters. Okay. Um, in which case, Mr. Bamba? I think, sir, um, on balance, um, the, the point that I want to make is probably best brought up next week under matter five. Um, I think that would be better because other participants would be more um, available to comment on it. So. Hmm. Um, it depends entirely on what it is you're going to say. <laughs> in that case, I, I shall raise it then, sir. <laughs> um, it, uh, um, my, my advice um, is that if it is about the duty to cooperate and the legal requirement. It's not um, about that. No, it's about sound, right. soundness. It's, uh, right. It would be under uh, 1.7 in the um, schedule of oh, matters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that, uh, that then um, being, being so, I, I think it's wise uh, that then to leave it. Um, I think, uh, well, first of all, did it, was there anyone else here to talk about anything else on the duty to cooperate? Okay, I mean, it seems to me um, that to some degree or another, we've pretty much covered um, my issues 1.1 to 1 1.5. Um, does that seem, does that seem right to everyone else? No. I've okay. I'll, I'll go because um, he indicated first um, to, to Mr. Webb and then I'll come to you, um, Ms. Cotier. 
Um, Mr. Webb. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm addressing uh, legal requirements, duty to cooperate issues, paragraphs 1.1 to 1.5. Um, this is on behalf of Transition Town Letchworth. We can make this brief or very brief in a moment. Our view is that the council did more by way of relevant cooperation than has been declared in their evidence. Now, as I understood it, uh, uh, Ms. Ormsby, QC, as the District Council's counsel, stated that the duty to cooperate documentation is not complete, which pretty much uh, supports um, our position, but I uh, can outline um, a slightly subtle matter. Uh, it is not indicating any uh, lack of cooperation. In fact, the reverse, that the, um, uh, the evidence does not do justice to the extent of cooperation. Or uh, we'd be content to uh, leave it with you in view of the admission that the documentation is incomplete. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, have, have you been a little shy? Uh, well, it, uh, it's um, very nice to hear that Mr. Webb thinks that we've done more than we actually need to do. Um, the incomplete documentation was just to point out to the inspector that um, the um, appendices to the County Council's um, statement is not complete, so um, he just needs to see those bits that are missing. So we've just um, agreed to put those into the examination. But um, th th thank you, Mr. Webb. Do those include matters of substance? Um, it's just to complete the, um, um, all the um, information in respect of email exchange correspondence, just so the inspector has the complete picture from uh, 2012 um, up to the um, time of the submission of the plan. It, it, it's no more than that. It, it's simply that there are just um, a, a few email exchanges which um, I understand are not included in the documentation and we will simply just have those so the inspector has the, uh, has the complete picture. But it doesn't change the substantive nature of the points that I've made. It's just for completeness. In which case, thank you, uh, Inspector, I... Uh, our view uh, is that there are um, omissions of parties with whom there has been cooperation and inconsistencies on the extent of actual cooperation. So I'd be happy to um, read out a dozen points to substantiate that briefly, yeah. if you wish. Please. Uh, the District Council has provided a great deal of evidence of cooperation with other authorities and agencies. This evidence mainly takes the form of memoranda of understanding and statements of common ground, plus the overall statement of compliance. We compared the District Council's presentation of their evidence of duty to cooperate with those of some other councils and noted that some were open-ended and exemplary uh, in giving examples, rather than claiming to be comprehensive. We're not claiming that the Council has fallen short against the duty to cooperate, up to the time of submission or on an ongoing basis. Rather, we're of the view that the draft plan does not do justice fully to the extent of that cooperation. Our view is based on what appear to us to be important omissions and inconsistencies in the evidence presented for this examination. However, we're not well placed to conduct a gap analysis, so to speak, to assess the completeness and consistency or otherwise of the draft plan. Neither have uh, you, sir, requested such analysis from the Council, who have confirmed to us that no such chart or spreadsheet or checklist um, exists in their custody. About a week ago, we tried to meet the Council's officers to establish some common ground and perhaps validate our short list of apparent omissions and inconsistencies, but we made that request far too late in the process when the Council's officer team was fully occupied in final preparations for these hearings. So all we can do is uh, 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 we're quite content to leave the matter with you since this would at most only result in minor modifications as we see it. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Mr. Webb. Um, Ms. Cotier. 
Um, Sorry, have, uh, I, have I pronounced your name right there? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, so it's to do with the East Luton site, and they haven't put anything in the local plan about New Century Park, which is going to be a massive enterprise development zone for four to seven thousand new jobs and I was quite surprised when I looked through the local plan I scanned it and couldn't see anything about Century Park at all and I thought well that can't be right surely because they're about to put the plan in application in now any minute now um, and how can you have missed that so I checked back into the past and I found that the council was aware of it back when regional spatial strategy used to be um, used before they got rid of it and um, they uh, back then had decided east of Luton wouldn't be an appropriate spot to develop because of century it was called Century Park back then um, and now it's called New Century Park so they were aware of it um, and the fact that it's going to be um, a, an industrial state and it's going to have between four to seven thousand new jobs I mean probably at least eight thousand vehicle movements on that road that road network a day and it's a mere stone's throw away from the site that they're planning to develop so I wondered what Luton Borough Council said regarding this and I didn't have time to read everything but I did find what Luton London Airport um, said about them missing off this and they said that they didn't feel that there had been duty to cooperate because they hadn't engaged with them on this particular thing. And I'm struggling to see how you cannot have engaged with somebody over such a massive development that's about to happen right now in that very area. How can it have been missed off when you knew about it once in the past and it was a in your regional spatial strategy. In fact, it was one of the main reasons you decided not to develop that area. That's really mainly what I want to say. And um, relating to the vehicle movements that will be going into that road network and how it relates to the pro proposed development in the local plan, there's only one road into the development site and one road out the back. Um, so the road that's going into the site, you would have thought they would, they would have collaborated both councils to do a transport study on that road, but instead they used modelling data and didn't do any transportation studies on that road because I sent freedom of information requests last year to both councils requesting such data and they responded saying they didn't hold it, it hadn't ever been done. Um, so they actually don't have any idea how busy the main road is now and they certainly haven't even figured in that extra 8,000 vehicle movements a day from all those extra jobs and that's not that's not adequate um, it, it falls short of the mark no, you have no, to not, know. not sorry forgive me um, not, not, not adequate you say because um, the council ought to have engaged under the duty to cooperate um, with what a neighboring authority and, and the, um, the highways authority both 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 about the development and what that will mean for the road networks and also the fact that the development's going ahead and they failed to mention it in the plan and this is a, a big um, economic project and I think there was even a white paper on it I I'd have to dig it from my computer but it was mentioned it's, it's, it's been on the cards for ages how it can have been missed off is beyond me and um, the fact that there's no transportation studies done on that road that's going into the into the development and although they've done um, certain they've used data sets and data modeling instead of doing the actual studies of the actual road and I hope that's not a habit that is carried through in other areas of their studies. I hope that they, instead of doing modelling, they, they look at the actual thing mm. and measure it accurately. <coughs> because, you know, something that um, we have to remember when we're using modelling and data sets is that it's, it's made to seem scientific and it's spoken as though, oh, this will be a completely neutral scientific way of... <coughs> 
um, studying something, but a model is just a model. It's not the real thing. And data sets can have biases written into them because the data is only as good as the people that put it in. And we all know about how initial, um, what they call it, uh, sensitivity to initial conditions where one tiny, tiny little data difference can carry on in a model and become a completely different trajectory at the end of it. That was the butterfly effect, wasn't it? But, you know, a tiny, tiny thing can become a big modelling difference. Okay, what, what, what I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold you there, mm. um, because I, I, I think you're, you're going to go on to um, detailed stuff um, that, that's not for today. No, um, just that main yeah, thing about Century Park. I have Park. those points, yeah, yeah but um, for, for today I think the main point is um, <coughs> the council ought to have engaged um, under the duty um, with, I think it's Luton, um, and also with the highway um, authority in relation to, to this particular issue. Yeah. It, have, I, have, I, have I got that right? Yeah, and also you can check the statement that um, Luton, London, London Luton Airport Operations yeah. Limited have also, I don't really, I rarely agree on anything they've got to say, but on this occasion I do agree with what they're saying, is they're saying no, there hasn't been cooperation with us, and they've completely ignored this is a huge project for us. Yeah, they, 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 they did say that, and um, that, that's something that I was going to pick up with the council um, in any event. Um, so but w what does the council say um, to Ms. Ms. Cotier's points? Um, if I can address that. Um, in terms of the duty to cooperate, obviously the, the sort of prescribed body um, for that cooperation is, is mainly the Borough Council um, at Luton, and there has been extensive cooperation um, with Luton Borough Council over the preparation of the plan. Um, we haven't agreed the statement of common ground with them um, in the examination library at ED18. The issue of Century Park has been discussed, and if you look within ED18, it's so, uh, paragraph 4.1. If you bear with me. Yep. Um, admirably swift delivery, but um, you, if you can let my note-taking carry out, uh, uh, keep up. A subtle suggestion to slow down. Yes. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch the, uh, the document reference. Um, ED18. ED18. Thank you. Para. The paragraph 4.1. Luton confirmed there is no ask of North Hearts in terms of employment land provision in this plan. The other point, obviously, in terms of transport, there has been transport modelling um, carried out. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't want to go down um, the, the the rights and wrongs of um, modelling okay. over um, a actual traffic movement figures um, at, at present because that's not not for today. As I understand the position, sir, the county council, in its highway capacity, is not taking any duty to cooperate point against the council and is satisfied that the duty to cooperate has been satisfied in so far as engagement on transport matters is concerned. And the points that I think are being raised by Ms. Cotier are in relation to the soundness of the plan rather than the point of engagement. Um, certainly the, the, the question about um, you know, modelling um, is, is, a, is a soundness one rather than um, a duty to cooperate one. Um, but I, th I think you're main point there is that the highway authority you say um, is satisfied in relation to the duty to cooperate that's that's correct sir. in so far as the duty to cooperate point is concerned which is what this session is about um, the appropriate um, statutory um, parties are Luton Borough Council for Century Park um, and transport and also the highway authority for transport and both those authorities are satisfied but in so far as the duty to cooperate point is concerned, um, there has been appropriate engagement to discharge that duty. Luton Airport are not um, a party um, to which the duty is engaged. Um, it's the yeah, Borough if Council. You bear with me. Um, yes, it was from Luton London Airport 
Operations oh. Limited. Operations Limited, yeah. thank you for that. They're the operating company, but the airport itself mm. is the council. I know that sounds a bit strange, but the council mm. is its 100% shareholder and they share employees. They're one and the same, actually. So even though the operations side is run by yes, the, the Leo. L Luton um, Council is the majority shareholder. 100% shareholder. Oh, is it right? Well, that's quite a good majority. <laughs> <laughs> It is so that we've cooperated with Luton Borough Council. So, um, I, think, I, th I think these points are soundless points, not due to the cooperate points, with respect. Um, yes, in terms of prescribed <coughs> bodies, it's um, in, in, in relation to. Um, airports, it's a civil aviation authority, isn't it, I think? <coughs> Anything else on that? Miss Cotty, are you uh, indicating? <laughs> okay. Um, anything else on the duty to cooperate at all? Very good, thank you. Um, yes, is that Ms. St. John Howe there? Um, do, do we still need time, um, Louise, um, to, to move people around for... Um, pardon? We will do, okay. Right, uh, well... I mean, I'm going to deal with the other, le other legal requirements bef um, first, but it was just for matter two, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I'll go then to issue 1.6. This is the statement of community involvement, and quite simply, um, has the plan been prepared in accordance with the <coughs> Council's statement of community involvement and met the minimum consultation requirements in the regulations? Um, is, that, uh, is that you, Ms. Ormsby? Um, it is, and the answer is yes. Thank you. Very succinct. Um, is anyone um, here to um, say otherwise? Um, ha has the Council um, involved other people um, as its uh, statement of community involvement says it will? Mr. Burroughs. Yes, I would make the point, uh, which I've already made in my presentation to you, that um, that on the actual uh, maps as such and also in some of the um, uh, wording in, in the various documents the, in, in the plan the, the, the major problem is, is that I don't think it's um, uh, suitable for putting to ordinary voters to ordinary people uh, and I make the point that for example, there is no alternative given to the plan, so an ordinary person reading it through um, really can't grasp uh, the, po the other possibilities. And for example, so if I may, one of them, of course, is, is that a district council uh, only has to uh, propose building on the green belt in exceptional circumstances. And it would have been, I think, extremely helpful to ordinary voters uh, if there'd been something saying, well, if we follow that policy, in other words, the, the one that everybody expects, uh, then the developments would be these, these, these sites would be these. So, so that's one point. And the other point is in relation to the sites itself. And, and that is, so you see a, a block of land possibly with other housing around it, possibly not, and it says 35. So you've no idea, that's houses, uh, dwellings. You've no idea actually how it fits in with the zone. It doesn't say it's so much an acre uh, reasonably developed, um, and, and the round it is so much an acre uh, if it's existing housing. And, and I don't think actually that's very fair on... Uh, ordinary voters, I think they're entitled to have a much better 
uh, presentation than that. Thank you, Mr. Burrows. So, um, I, I'm not quite sure um, that Mr. Burrows's point is concerned with whether we've prepared the plan in accordance with the statement of community involvement, um, because we say we have, and I, I don't think Mr. Burrows is suggesting that we, we haven't. Um, so I think the answer is still yes to the question that you've, um, that you've raised. Um, of course, the plan has uh, tried to explain that the District Council does need to meet its objectively assessed needs um, if it can, and um, that um, there are, in the Council's view, uh, the exceptional circumstances that exist in order to develop in the Green Belt. But that's a soundless matter that, no doubt, sir, you will come to consider in due course. Is that my clarifier, sir? It's clearly what I'm saying in the to have community involvement, you have to have ordinary people, after all, entitled to it, or pay out uh, council tax and so on. Ordinary people understand, by looking at the plan, what is actually being proposed. Uh, and I think that it, the actual plan itself and its attached, attached maps, to, to be perfectly frankly, to ordinary people, um, meaningless. And so there isn't any genuine community involvement. That was the point I was making, sir. Thank you. Does the council have anything to add? We'll simply say that we, we, we wouldn't agree with what Mr. Burrows is saying. We would say that there has been significant community involvement throughout the preparation of this plan, uh, not least in connection with the um, Regulation um, 20 consultation, which is clearly evidenced by the fact that you have the number of representations that you do and that we're at this examination and that there are many people here who are interested in, in the content of the plan. So um, we say that our statement of community involvement was appropriate. We say that we've complied with it and that there has been real engagement with the community in relation to this plan. And, that we, and I think it's a little unfair to say that they don't understand it because I think the community do understand what's in the plan, which has enabled them to make um, representations in relation to it. Um, what, what has the council done in terms of um, trying to reach out? Um, I'm thinking um, e engagement methods. Workshops. Um, yeah, thing. absolutely. Um, Perhaps planning for real exercises. Yes. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I'll um, let Miss Symes. Uh, Thank you. Um, in terms of the um, housing allocation sites, we did undertook consultation back in 2013 and that was the housing growth options consultation and also the housing, additional housing um, locations option consultation. And during that period, we actually held a series of exhibitions where officers were present and we went round, we must have held about seven or eight different e exhibitions around the district um, where officers were on hand to explain to the members of the public how we had made the decision in terms of the of the housing allocations, talking about the documentation, the evidence base that sat behind that, which was the Schlar at the time, and also the strategic housing market assessment. So all that information was available. We also, um, are, at the time, I portfolio holder um, also agreed to go and meet with various parish councils to explain um, and listen to their concerns. So we've made ourselves as far as council's concerned, we've actually done, gone over and above the duty. Thank you. No 
Okay, um, so, so you had these ex exhibitions, um, presumably with some um, ni nice plans on a, on a board or something like that, um, so, that, so, that people could, um, so, so that people could could see what was being proposed diagrammatically, if you like. Um, and then I'm, I'm just trying to picture the scene. Um, and then you, you have, um, what, of officers there explaining and discussing and that kind of thing, is that... Is that right? That, that's correct. We had it. We had plans. We had all the all the sites were were shown on on exhibition boards, um, and officers were on hand. Yes, to answer questions and discuss people's issues with them. <coughs> Councillor okay, so Levitt. Thank you, sir. Um, ju just reinforcing uh, what Mr. Simon said that about the uh, we not only did we do the formal consultations, everything else. Uh, at the Regu 19, Regulation 19 station going on from that, uh, a number of community groups organised their own meetings um, within different parishes and towns. Uh, if I was invite asked to go to those, I went to everywhere I possibly could, uh, answered questions and engaged with people where I could, and we actually got quite a lot of useful feedbacks from some of those ones that we later brought in. Uh, so there was, there was as much engagement as, as was needed um, several hundred people at some of those meetings. Um, quite interesting. Uh, there was also uh, a, a discussion on the radio when people were allowed in. There was various bits in the papers, responses to the ad, uh, questions and things in the papers. So we did engage formally and very informally as well. So. <coughs> um, so did you say radio interviews as well? With John Humphreys, presumably. No, it was uh, lo local radio, sir. Mr. Burrows. Just very quickly, there were uh, a point that I did, in fact, attend one of them, and I deliberately asked an officer uh, who was there, um, this per particular piece of land, and I said, roughly, how many is it per acre or per hectare? And he said, we didn't know. That was the point I was trying to make. Also, I wonder if I could add another point, and that the, the website, I think basically a lot of people who are fairly used to filling in websites and <coughs> questionnaires did find it very difficult to get round it. There was no, 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 I'm no good at this kind of thing, so I couldn't get round it, but quite a lot of people did say that the website was difficult to navigate. And a lot of people I know gave up. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what I'll do, um, Mr. Bowes, yeah. um, is take um, all of your points together. In, in if, if there are any more. No, um, in, in one parcel, as it were, yes, and, and then um, the same with Miss Cotier before um, looking, looking for a final comment from the council. Um, so you, you're all done, Mr. Burrows? Yes, yes I am. Miss um, yes. Cotier. Um, just that the website kept breaking down and people were becoming quite worried. Um, some people failed to get their um, representations in on time because of the portal went down. Um, there was a man called David Wynn, and he wrote to me, he used to be part of. Um, uh, keep East of Luton Green Group um, and he couldn't put his representation in because the portal went down and we did let the council know numerous times that this was happening and eventually after a long um, a long wait of about 30 days I got a reply saying there's nothing we can do about it because we outsource it to another company but I don't think that's satisfactory it should have been working at all times um, and it shouldn't have gone down especially not during critical consultation periods. Sorry, I wasn't looking at you there because I was trying to concentrate on what I was saying. That's so fine. <laughs> Just that. Okay. Um, from the council? Is that you, Mr. Smith? Um, looks like it. Um, <laughs> to, to deal with Ms. Uh, Cotier's uh, point first about the portal, I think there she's referring to our development management system because we've had um, planning applications on the East of Luton sites over, over a couple of years, and um, but it wasn't the local plan representations system, which to our knowledge was operational throughout the consultation period. Um, I believe we received around a third of our representations through the website. 
and obviously people were able to write email as well so there were there were various channels by which people could communicate with us um, just to pick up on mr burrow's point about um, sort of difficulty of navigation i think some of that arises from obviously particularly at regulation 19 stage and um, we're asking very sort of pointed and precise questions um, in order to, to aid yourself with the examination based on the the pins form um, we basically followed that model um, in terms of the questions we asked but um, and again in, in the run-up to that we did have sessions with parish councils and local interest groups on to on how to make the most effective representations knowing that at this stage we're not so much looking for sort of open-ended comments we're looking for sort of pointed representations on matters of soundness of legal compliance and those were held in advance of the reg 19 consultation Can I just clarify then, um, is the point that Ms. Cotier was raising in relation to planning applications being made in respect of Luton? Yes, so it wasn't the local plan website that you were referring to? It wasn't the local plan? Yes, it was the local plan and also on other right. occasions as well with the planning applications because you had planning applications running simultaneous to the local plan for the same sites. So the developers had put in applications for the land that you are still debating in the local plan, even before the local plan was finished or even examined. So um, we were doing both at the same time, trying to juggle both actually, it was quite difficult. And it was very difficult for the public to understand. Um, I spent a long time sending out emails trying to clarify to people, but obviously there's only so much one person can do. They were completely confused at the end of it as to what um, planning application and they should be responding to. Some people got all modelled up and thought, well, I've responded to Crown Estate and I've responded to Blur, so I don't need to respond to the local plan because for people who don't work in this area, it's hard for them to understand. You know, you, you work with it every day, so eventually you become familiar with it, but they're not in that situation. Well, sir, I, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the suggestion that the local plan representation website um, wasn't working. My, my instructions are that it worked throughout. So I think I might just ask for um, a, you know, just a short note to be prepared for you on, on, on that point. I think there might have been an issue in respect of the development management website in relation to the planning applications for Luton. But that's a separate issue. Not just issue. Luton, the whole thing. So um, I, I'll, I'll just investigate that and we'll come back to you on, with a short, short response. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Another small item of homework. Um, can, can I just check, um, Ms. Cotier? Um, the, the, the problem um, you say that there was with the with the website mm -hmm. um, was that at um, the most recent consultation stage mm, yeah it was both because um, I got mine I in the end I submitted mine via email um, but some people didn't have the email and they were intending to do it through the portal um, and for example David Wynn he didn't submit his in the end because he said the site went down and I couldn't do it. So, and then he didn't have the email or something. And there were quite a lot of late um, submissions and I noticed they were all from east of Luton and I'm not quite sure why they came in late. And they were all via, supposedly, email. What, what, what I just want to be sure about um, is, is when we're, we're talking about, because obviously the council has undertaken a number of different plan, consultations yeah. on the plan. Um, my particular interest um, is in relation to um, the regulation 19 consultation which was October and November last year yeah I think I have some old emails but it would take me some time to dig them out I did take a couple of screenshots as well at the time um, I can dig them out but not like at a you know one minute notice right now but I can do that as homework or something this evening and I don't normally set homework for others, but um, <laughs> I, I don't mind if you want to take it upon yourself. I'll, I'll try and do um, something. I, I think what, what may well be helpful here is if, um, Ms. Cotia, you, you could um, have a look, mm -hmm. um, and if you do have screenshots, um, then that's going to be 
helpful. Um, okay. And perhaps if you discuss that um, with the council as well. Um, I mean, from my perspective, it's quite difficult because this is what ought to be a matter of fact. Um, but fr from, from where I'm sat now, it, it's difficult for me to know precisely what's right. Um, so um, if, if, you, if the council would um, discuss that with um, Ms. Cotier um, and um, let me know, um, I, I'd be grateful. Is that something that's going to take a while to sort out? Do you have to talk to IT people and that kind of thing? Uh, we, may ha we may need to, sir, yes. Um, but um, we'll do our best and we'll do it as, as, as quickly as we, as quickly as we, um, as we can. Um, I think the important point is, um, is there anybody who is coming to this examination who is saying, um, I haven't had an opportunity to make a representation to the examination and be heard? That's the ultimate acid test for you, mm. sir. And as far as I'm aware, nobody is saying that. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else in relation to the um, statement of community involvement? Very good, thank you. Um, I'll go then to issue 1.7, <coughs> sustainability appraisal. Um, now, I ask people um, to, to bear in mind um, that I'm talking about the sustainability appraisal here um, in relation to um, the legal um, requirements um, rather than um, other comments that um, you, you, you may have um, about it. So um, the question then is, um, has the plan's formulation been based on a sound process of sustainability appraisal and testing of reasonable alternatives um, and in the legal sense is the sustainability appraisal adequate? Um, are you, Ms. Ornsby, going to say anything other than, yes, it is? Well, well sir, no, I'm not. Um, we've set out in quite a lot of detail in our Matter 1 statement of paragraph 1.7 what has been carried out um, in accordance with the sustainability appraisal. Um, you'll see from the table um, set out in the Matter 1 statement that we have assessed that against the, um, the relevant regulations um, we have the author of the sustainability appraisal here. Um, so, um, so what I suggest you do is if you want to hear any points that um, people around the table may want to make, and then we'll do our best to respond to them. I think that's perhaps the best way to proceed if, if that's agreeable to you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Burrows. Oh, yes, yeah, so just uh, basically repeating what I said before, and that is as regards testing of reasonable alternatives, I must confess, I haven't really, I tried to keep up with what was being uh, put forward by our council, but um, I didn't actually ever see what I one would say any reasonable alternatives being mentioned. Thank you. And I'm grateful to know what they were. So I'll ask the author of the sustainability appraisal. I mean, obviously, it's a long document. Um, it does set out the reasonable alternatives that have been considered to the plan. And I think what I'll perhaps ask the author to do is simply just to explain to you where in the documentation that is to be, to be found. Uh, w what I'll do, uh, though, first is hear from... Um, is it Ms. Ms. Barnes or, Mi or Mrs. Barnes? Mrs. Barnes. M Mrs. Barnes. Um, thank you. I'm speaking really um, about Letchworth here. Um, we find that the, the process of sustainability appraisal, which is based really on the landscape sensitivity studies and the Green Belt Review, has, um, sites are chosen after a scoring process within both of those two documents, and that then feeds into the sustainability appraisal. 
And what we find is not sound is the system of scoring that's used in those other two documents, the landscape sensitivity statement and the Greenbelt Review. What we particularly feel is um, not sound is the way in which, uh, just as an example, sites are scored on how many sides a particular plot of land has adjacent to existing development. The plots of land are wildly different in terms of the numbers of sides they've got, and there's no allowance for this in the scoring system. Um, and, and we don't feel that, in particular, the sites in Letchworth, the LG1 and LG3 sites, have come out of this scoring process well, and we feel that is because the scoring process doesn't adequately reflect um, the historic importance um, and also the areas of development adjacent to the sites. Can I just make one point in, in, in response to that? Of, of, of course, the points that are raised are perfectly valid points and points that you'll need to discuss in due course, but they don't go to the legality of the, of, of the document. These are the planning judgments that have been made in the light of that document. So, If, if it helps, I knew yeah. you were going to yeah, say right, that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Inspector. I think um, I'll take you to paragraph 51, um, sorry, no, paragraph 54 in the council's response um, on page 15. And it reads, the sustainability appraisal has been integ integrated with the plan making process throughout and its conclusions have informed and underpinned the development of the local plan. But then we find document LP8, which is um, an amendment to or an additional document of the sustainability appraisal which has been prepared um, as I understand it post submission of the plan and, and, and this document sets out various um, responses to representations made to that consultation the regulation 19 consultation um, from a range of people including ourselves and also um, statutory bodies such as Natural England and that recommends changes which are need, need to be made to the submission sustainability appraisal. So our concern is that the sustainability appraisal which was presented to the full council when determining to go out for the Regulation 19 consultation was inadequate um, and it didn't meet the requirements of the the directive which, which governs how you prepare a sustainability appraisal. We, we accept the point that SA can be changed through, through the modification of the plan, but these are, um, the document I'm referring to, L, LPA is, is about 34 pages long. Um, there are considerable changes that are needed to the, the SA which would be required to support the council's position of the plan as it is. Um, we can't be sure that if this version of the essay had gone to the full council, would they have still made the same decisions? So that, that's the first. That's the first point. If you bear There's, with me. Yeah. The second and the third points can really be, be taken together. Um, the first one of those is, is, is the issue of paper chase, which is an issue which has come before the courts uh, on successful legal challenges to sustainability appraisals. And tied in with that is the consideration of alternatives. And within our hearing statements, we set out how the, the council have, um, in the past, uh, and this is going back a number of years, looked at um, smaller sites which our client has got interest within but they have progressively um, amalgamated those into sub quite substantial uh, urban extensions um, it is now considered a uh, as, as part of a uh, approximately 7,000 unit urban extension whereas my client's land 
is substantially smaller than, than that. Um, so therefore, the sustainability appraisal which the council has used doesn't really consider um, a reasonable alternative. I, I, I may go so far as being cynical and saying that the, these sites could have been put together to pr 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 this have this large uh, urban extension to, to demonstrate that they aren't sustainable. Um, whereas if they were taken on their own in, in the smaller components, then they could, um, the outcomes would be very different. And the, the paper chase argument from that stems from that you need to go back to um, old versions of the sustainability appraisal which have been superseded. Um, the, the points from those have no longer been carried forward because those sites no longer exist in the essay. Um, you have to go back to old versions of the essay to understand what the um, council's opinion of those sites would have been then. That those have now been lost in the most recent versions of the sustainability appraisal. But, um, uh, but our client has repeatedly set out that these are discrete parcels of land that they wish to see delivered on their own. They can happen independently of other parcels of land. They don't need to be part of a 7,000 7, unit urban extension. So it, it is part of the point there, Mr. Roberts, um, in relation to um, alternatives and to, to understand um, how the council has looked at those alternatives, one has to go back to um, previous versions, um, iterations um, of the sustainability appraisal. That's, that's correct, and I, I appreciate that the council has gone through very uh, numerous versions of the plan, but those alternative options have been removed from the most recent sustainability appraisal. Um, and you, you mentioned there, I think, that um, the courts have had something to say about that. Is that right? Um, Yes, that's correct. Uh, do you want to tell me what they've had to say about that? Uh, briefly, um, I suppose the first one is heard um, versus Broadland District Council, South North District Council and Norwich City Council. Is alternative should be assessed to the same level as the proposed sites and that all SA documentation should be consulted on together. Um, and the, the paper chase is the safe historic new market versus Forest Heath District Council and, and that is in specific regard to the handling of alternatives and the issue that the uh, that was hand, that the judgment handed down there the issue was that you had to go back to these old versions of the sustainability appraisal to understand what the council's opinion was on these specific sites um, the council should although they may uh, keep them as omitted sites they should still need to have those within the most version, most recent version of the of the essay. And I, I use my client sites as an example uh, of, of, to this issue. So I'm not wishing to go into the the pros and cons of those sites at, at this present time. Thank you. I think what I might do, Mr. Banner, is just ask the, um, the council to respond first of all, because there are a number of different points um, there. Who's, uh, who's the lucky winner? <laughs> it's me, I think. Uh, sorry, I can't see your name plate there. I do apologise. Gerard Cooper. That's me. Well, that's you. I've fallen off the table. I ah, think. I see. Yes, right. <laughs> but I'm Gerard uh, Cooper. M Mr. Cooper. Thank you. Uh, I mean, the two key points, I think there were three points mentioned, reasonable alternatives, the paper chase argument, and the argument about the paper called LP8, which was um, suggested changes to the sustainability appraisal. So I, shall I start with the paper chase? Because I think that's relatively simple, and I can move to alternatives. How does that sound? That's fine by me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, all the documents which the SA relies on are included in the SA submission report. So we don't accept a paper, a paper chase is required. Um, I can go through the details in relation to the site that talking about, but as a general principle, um, 
everything that's required to understand the essay is in that report, and that's outlined in the table in section 62 of, of council submission, outlines where all the requirements are addressed, and they're all within the essay report, including comments on the sites being referred to. So that's on that point. Um, uh, and I can take you um, to the places in the essay document where um, in the submission they talk about decision making and the reasons for choosing specific options. If you like, I can take you to the place in the essay document where we've done that. But um, it might be more helpful to move on to talking about um, alternatives because I think the main complaint being made about um, a paper chase relates to the specific site, which is a site alternative. So, Yes, talk to me about alternatives. I'll talk about alternatives, because I think that's really the nub of, of the argument. <coughs> um, so just to give an overview of alternatives and how they're addressed within the SA process, we're legally, the council's legally required to consider reasonable alternatives um, in, in, um, in the SA process, and guidance says that <coughs> it's, it's useful to do this at different levels. So you start with a strategic level, which is your strategic appro approach to, say, providing housing. Um, then you look at different alternatives for that, which is um, where you build, um, whether you build a new town, whether you build on greenfield or brownfield, those strategic level. Then you go down a level, and once you've agreed your alternative on that, you look at um, housing numbers. And then once you've decided on your housing, looking at alter you have to look at alternatives for housing numbers, which we've done. Once you've done your housing, that level of alternatives, you then go down a level, in this case we're talking about ha allocations, so you look at site alternatives. So really this is what we're talking about and this is what the objection is, is about. I think when you say they're um, site alternatives, um, do you mean um, site alternatives um, that conform with um, the decision made about the, what the strategic decisions that have been That's made? It. So alternatives for meeting uh, the housing numbers, which, we, which the council has decided, has, has looked at the alternatives, it's, come, it's decided it has to deliver X amount of housing, which I believe 17,000. Um, and then it looks at, well, what are the alternatives for delivering this housing? And following the regulations, it has to <coughs> consider all reasonable alternatives. So th this third level really is what I think the debate's about, is about have we considered this particular site within looking at reasonable alternatives? Is that okay as an as a overview? Um, I, I understand what you're saying, if yeah. that's what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so when it comes down to reasonable site alternatives at a site level, what we're talking about is sites that meet the tests of the SHLA. So the, the three tests of the SHLA, um, are they... Let me find my bit of paper. So, in the sustainability appraisal document, it describes this, um, the how, how this process happened, but the Schla process, I, I'm saying this kind of give an overview, um, it, it aims to identify sites which are deliverable, and there's three tests, are the sites suitable for development, are they available for de development, and would, would development be achievable? That's the three Schla tests. And the SA is required to appraise every, every housing site which is considered reasonable, i.e. each site which has met those three 
conditions under the Schla, and um, that is what we did. So that's the overview. Um, and then <coughs> moving on to the particular sites that's been talked about um, and how that's presented in the sustainability appraisal. Um, well, um, would you write them? Uh, you know, um, as much as um, Mr. Roberts might like me to, I don't want to dwell um, on, on, on his site um, in, in particular. So okay. long as, so long as um, you, you're explaining to me um, that the way in which um, the SA has been set about. Um, so I, I don't particularly want to um, to take any particular site as an example. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I perfectly well understand what what um, what you've just just told me. Um, does the council, I don't know, um, Ms. Ormsby, if there's anything that you wanted to say um, uh, in relation to um, yeah, the paper chase and the point that the courts um, has made, that the courts have made in that regard? Well, sir, simply this is that we don't accept that this is a paper chase because we say that all you, everything that you need is in LP4, which has now been supplemented by LP8. And, and that is the sustainability appraisal of the, the plan that's before you. Supplemented by LP8. Eight, yes. Uh, which is, in effect, an addendum, isn't it? It is, sir. Um, the point of LP8 is that it's a direct response to the um, Regulation 19 consultation. So the plan and the sustainability appraisal went out for consultation as it's required to do under the, the various requirements. Comments have come in in respect of that. And prior to submission, LP8 was produced to take on board those comments. But you will see, sir, that there is no um, significant change to the plan in the light of LP8. So there's been no um, fundamental changes to the plan. It simply merely supplements the information in the light of the representations that have been received, which is what we would say is the, is the correct approach. Mr. Roberts. We don't know what the changes would be because the LP8 doesn't actually um, redo the sustainability appraisal. It just notes what should be done. So we, we, we don't know yet. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you run that past me? Sorry, uh, L document LP8. Yeah. Um, it sets out what changes should be made to the submission um, sustainability appraisal. It doesn't tell us what those changes are. So um, we don't know yet what the implications could be. And it just, it's just contrary to paragraph 54 of, that, of their response, which I took you to first, which says it's integrate, integrated with the plan making process throughout. We, we don't know what those changes are. Would that have changed what the, what the council's decisions may have been? And, and the point, I'm not quite sure if I understood the council's response on the alternatives, but it, it suggested, it sounded to me um, that a 7,000 unit SUE met the three tests, suitable, available, achievable, but a smaller component of that SUE does not. Maybe that's not the, pe the point that we're, that we're not making. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But. We're not getting into the detail of particular al mm. alternative proposals um, uh, with your guidance, sir. Uh, um, but insofar as the change to be made to the submission sustainability appraisal is concerned, that is articulated in LP8, which is the table which says what the change is that will need to be made to the sustainability appraisal. And... Um, it's my submission to you, sir, that those are not significant or material changes to, to the plan or the sustainability appraisal. Okay, so L LP8 sets out then, does it, um, changes that ought to be made to the SA? Yes, that's right, sir. Right. Um, and, and, and of course, sir, sustainability appraisal is an iterative um, process. But I think the important point is that, um, and, and it's simply responding to the representations that have been made, uh, it would be 
um, not appropriate for representations to be made if they raise a good point for the council to simply ignore it. Yeah. The whole point of consultation is that it's meaningful yeah. and that you do actually respond, take it into account and respond to it and make any changes that you think are appropriate in the light of it, otherwise it's not a proper consultation. Okay. Um, have those changes, I mean, should those changes then be made to the sustainability appraisal? Have, have they been made to the sustainability appraisal? If, if not, sh should they be? I, mean, I, I ask this, you, you'll understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, this. Yeah. I, I don't think it's anyone in anyone's interest um, for um, th this plan um, to, how shall I put it? Um, Fail. Be, well, <laughs> no, um, be open to challenge. Um, on, on a procedural point of that kind. Yeah, absolutely, um, sir. No, I, well, I agree with you. Um, I, I'm, from what I've seen, I'm pretty relaxed about this. Um, it's extremely difficult these days to get, um, to, to get a successful challenge off the ground on a sustainability appraisal. Courts are really not very interested at all um, on these sorts of technical points. Um, the, the only um, point that I'm making is that we've undertaken the consultation We've had um, the responses back and we have made appropriate adjustments um, which will in due course need to be made to the sustainability appraisal, which is ongoing and, uh, as you've rightly said, if any modifications are made to the, plane, to the plan, those two would need to be sustainably appraised at the appropriate time. That This is ongoing work at the moment, but the point is that there are no significant changes that need to be made to the plan in the light of the Regulation 19 consultation um, as revealed by LP8. Um, we've simply taken on board um, where a good point has been made and um, we've taken it on board. Mr Cooper? Just to say, to answer your question, I have, actually, uh, I have a version that's been updated to take account of these changes, which um, will be made available in due course. So yes, this, they will be incorporated into the SA and they are all matters of clarification essentially. Can I just make three, three other points? Firstly, just following up from, um, from what um, has just been, um, what you were just taking through in respect to the overview, the um, strategic approach to housing and the alternatives that were considered just for your note are at paragraph 4.2, page 26 of LP4. Sorry, that was um, paragraph? Um, 4.2, page 26 of LP4. Yeah the um, different, different alternatives in respect of how one goes about delivering that housing is um, contained at paragraph 4.3 at page 30 of LP4. And the preferred sites are all um, set out and considered at appendix 6 to LP4 and the rejected sites are set out in appendix 7 to LP4. So that is where the, the, the key parts of the sustainability appraisal that's been outlined to you are located in the document. Uh, can I just check, could everyone hear all of that well enough? Yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Um, minor point, is this the page number in the top left hand corner or the other page numbers on LP? <laughs> um, uh, I'm taking the bottom right hand corner. All right, okay. I'll chase the paper around and see what I can find. Well, I don't think you'll have to chase very far, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> no, no. Um, Mr. Burrows. <coughs> yeah, I think the gentleman there was before me. Is that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all I have. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I'm, yeah. Mr. Banner, are, are you on a, you're a different point altogether? No, it, it, it is actually related to uh, okay. exactly this conversation, actually. So it's probably a good point at which to interject. Then okay. please do. Thank you, Mr. Thank Burroughs. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yes. Um, 
It is in relation to the sustainability appraisal. Um, when I um, look at it, uh, and I, I've gone through um, in, in some detail, uh, and it does include um, quite uh, sensible ob objectives that cover, you know, for example, my area of interest, which is the uh, um, transport sustainability. Objective 2C covers that, uh, and that's broken down into sub objectives, um, and then the um, alternatives um, I would expect to be tested against um, those objectives. Um, and I note that there are five alternatives which you've just been referred to by um, the Council. Um, but when I come to look at how those um, alternatives ha have been assessed, um, I, I, what I see is a very brief um, and unjustified um, statement that the council has chosen uh, a combination of four of those options. So essentially the conclusion of the um, assessment of the alternatives is that just the, um, the building of a new settlement is excluded from the considerations. Now, when I um, then look at the other alternatives, what I don't see um, as part of the sustainability appraisal is any, um, if you like, reasoned discrimination between those alternatives dealing, for example, with um, how well they would fare in terms of, for example, transport sustainability. Um, the, the sustainability appraisal um, does identify in several places, um, for example, the fact that putting um, development in villages um, when tested against that objective 2C, um, that fares very poorly um, compared to other options. Um, but when it comes down to deciding which of the alternative um, distributions uh, should be adopted or prioritised, there is nothing in the sustainability appraisal that would help me understand how the Council has come to the conclusion that um, the the approach should be a combination. So in general terms, what uh, it seems to me is happening is that there is a, um, if you like, leaping from the identification of alternatives straight to the assessment of those SLA sites uh, without the, um, um, uh, an ability to assess the relative merits against all the objectives within the sustainability appraisal um, of you know, choosing one above another. Does that? I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Th that, that's the point. That, um, that's, that's, my, that's where I, my concern about the soundness resides because it seems that there isn't, although there's a lot of information in there, obviously, um, what I don't see is an ability to um, feed through that process uh, and um, convince, certainly the, from where I'm lo looking uh, at it from, um, that the outcome of the process is leading to um, uh, a distribution of housing that does meet the requirements of NPPF in terms of um, sustainable development. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Burrows. Yes, it's really on the question of testing of reasonable alternatives. Uh, um, to me, a reasonable alternative uh, to test and, and put to the local people is not to invade the Green Belt on the basis that there are no exceptional circumstances for and But as far as I'm aware, Mr. Cooper hasn't uh, considered that as a, as a consultant. My impression is that he hasn't even considered that possibility um, and, it, and it's not been tested in that way. And I mean, I know we all know that the elephant in this room is the new homes bonus. And let's not be dishonest, we all know it. Um, but again, I still do believe that um, uh, a testing of the alternative of not invading the Green Belt I believe to be, be vital, and it ha and from what Mr. Cooper said, it just hasn't been done. 
And then I would ask, for example, there's employment. There don't seem to be any testing of the alternatives to the employment sites, expecting that everybody goes presumably to Cambridge and, and London. So I, I, this is where the point I'm making is simply that. There's been no testing as far as I can tell. But no doubt Mr. Cooper will tell me I'm wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cooper. You're wrong. <laughs> um, we actually did specifically, when I talked about, apologies for not making it clear, but when I talked about looking at housing number options, mm -hmm. one of the alternatives was for six and a half thousand houses, mm -hmm. which, which is the business as usual option, <clears throat> which means there's no local plan. Um, and that assumes that no greenbelt sites are used. So the alternative of not using any greenbelt sites was it, tested as one of those. What was the result of the test? That essentially it wouldn't provide, well you have to read there's a lot of detail in there. You have to read the detail. I don't want to be drawn on that because we'll be here all day. Uh, oh. Yes, uh, and we do have another day set aside for that very thing. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, on the do I detect genuine insight, excitement there, Mr. Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have spent a long time on this. <laughs> um, the point Mr. Bamber made, I would say it's not the role of the SA to choose the alternative. The role of the SA is to provide the information about the impacts of the alternatives and then the council makes a decision based, in, based on that information and other, other information like planning information, political priorities. So uh, we, this is, is just describing what the sustainability impacts of the options are as required, it also says why the alternatives were chosen, but it, it, it's not ro its role isn't to make that decision. Just, may I just say just one very quick point? Uh, yes. Did, was anything taken into account to do with uh, our decision to leave the European Union? Because that will have an enormous impact, I believe, upon um, uh, demand for housing. And in fact, it's beginning to do so, according to the reports. Thank you. In, in terms of the point we're on at the moment, and sustainability appraisal, um, no, in the sense that the Brexit decision was taken very late in the day in terms of the genesis of the plan. I'd suggest that perhaps Brexit and impact on housing is, is an issue we'll cover looking at the statements in some depth tomorrow. Um, and without wanting to cut off the point now, is perhaps best dealt with in our consideration of, of OAN and impact on housing numbers. Yeah. Mr. Banner. Just coming back very quickly. Um, what I normally see at um, uh, in association with sustainability appraisals is, is some kind of summary matrix where um, you have the alternatives and they are ranked or graded or scored in some way against um, the objectives set out in the appraisal. Um, what I don't see is any um, summary of those alternatives in this document. Um, all I see is a brief summary saying the council has chosen a combination I come back on that, because just for information, yeah, that, that, the detail of all that's in Appendix 3, so um, that has the matrices for the appraisal of those alternatives, so that's where all the detail is, and obviously uh, we haven't put it all in the main report, just because it's, it takes up too much space. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it doesn't provide that information. It, it does not pro provide a direct comparison between those alternatives. Mm. Yeah. Good, let's have a look. 
Can someone help me. Appendix three. Page two three nine on top North, yeah. North Hearts numbering. Uh, bear with me. I, I'm using for the first time your files uh, of these documents. I haven't brought mine um, with me. Um, so can, do you know where it is in here? So it's um, appendix uh, three. It's about halfway through volume one sure. of the document. I think I've got the right thing here. Um, let me just check. Appendix three, appraisal of objectives and options, yeah. um, September 2016. That's correct, sir. And there's an, there is numbering in the bottom. Okay, and my, my apologies. I, I didn't catch um, what page I was supposed to be going to anyway. Well, well actually, if, you, if you, we're talking about um, the strategic alternative about where new housing should go, mm. go to page 275 in the North Hearts numbering at the top. It's correct to say that there isn't a comparative table in there, which is the point you're making, um, but the impact of each option is considered in detail there. Actually, just to say, this is only the conclusions bit. I'm not subjecting you to the full matrices, which I can take you to if you like. So this gives you more of an idea of how it was treated. So these are the conclusions of an appraisal um, of, of each um, strategic alternative for housing. And I think the point is... And where, where then um, are the matrices? Okay, the matrices start. Where do they start? Okay. Okay, the matrices start on page 369, North Hearts numbering. Bottom right number, page one, two, two, in appendix three. I mean, I think just to say and test in, in looking at alternatives, uh, they're not, as was in this case, you're not choosing either A, you don't have to choose either A or B. In the fact, that's what the council has done. So the fact that there's not a table with the results of all five alternatives didn't materially affect their decision making on this. Mm, I don't follow you, sorry, say that again. Well, I guess the point's been made is that there should be a table here showing the results together of, all f of, of each, there's five strategic alternatives. Mm. We've tested them. You're looking at or the detail of that. And I think the point being made is we should have showed those results in one comparative table. Hmm. In a shoot off, but hmm. you haven't done that. We haven't um, done no, that. No, you've, you've, you've simply produced separate tables. That's it. But we would say that hasn't materially affected the value of the sustainability appraisal or the decision making that arose from it. The, the problem that, that I still retain is that um, if I'm going to try and work out from these tables, I have to produce my own summary table. Um, and what we don't have here is any kind of comparison that shows, for example, which of these options would fare better in terms of, for example, um, generating a pattern of development that is sustainable in terms of transport, in terms of maximising access to public transport, encouraging walking and cycling, and so on. There is nothing that tells me 
that the council has considered that um, one uh, option, alternative, um, should be um, pursued in um, above and beyond another alternative because it fares better. Um, at the end of the day, there is no discrimination at all um, between those four alternatives. Um, it, it, does the, as, as you put it, does that kind of, well, I, I'll use your word, um, discrimination come about um, by the, the scoring system um, that's used um, and qualitatively um, in terms of the, the commentary um, as well? well and, and, um, you, and you look at those things for each option um, and bear those things in mind um, and, and reach a conclusion on that. I, I, I think that that's what the council um, is saying to us. Um, but you're saying that there ought to be something more conclusive, decisive? Well, um, obviously I am talking from the context of um, Codicott and um, the development that's being proposed there. Um, but uh, I've made a detailed submission in terms of the, um, in relation to the, tra the sustainability, um, transport sustainability of locating a significant amount of development in that location. Um, and all the sustainability tables demonstrate that to locate development in rural villages is uh, unsustainable from a transport uh, sustainability perspective. Um, so I, I see nothing um, from this that shows that there has been any thought process gone through by the council um, to consider um, this issue in deciding where to put that development. It seems to me that um, sites have come forward and they have um, been identified with that particular alternative uh, development pattern and therefore included as proposed sites. Um, and then the implication, um, if I then look at what is being proposed in terms of policy to deal with that, um, SP6, I think, um, deals with um, trying to encourage sustainable travel, but um, it is caveated, the wording of that policy uh, says that where reasonable and practicable to provide, for example, public transport services, but in reality, that is not going to mitigate the adverse impacts of putting development in a location which the sustainability appraisal has shown to be unsustainable in terms of transport. Those, I mean, it seems to me that those points about uh, development in the villages and the impact on transport aren't a point about what we're talking about now, which is the legality of the sustainability appraisal. Um, the sustainability appraisal's role is to point those things out, which it has done, and really that, that's what's, I think that's what today is about. I mean, obviously, if you want to look at specific sites, presumably that is under whatever it is, mapping nine. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going into no, details no, of specific so sites and the rest of it now. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> the sustainability appraisal's role, which we maintain it's done, is, is to present those impacts. It doesn't make the decision. It provides the information which informs the decision. <clears throat> um, anything else you wanted to say on that, Mr. Banner? Um, no, I, I think I've made the point, and yeah, I, I, and, and I, I have that. Um, anything else on um, what we've just been talking about and what we've just heard? 
So can I just make one, one point, um, just to follow up on what Mr. Cooper has been saying. I mean, that is absolutely right. Um, regulation uh, 12 of the Environmental Assessment of Plans and Programmes, Regulations 2004, make it clear what the purpose of an environmental report is, and that, that is simply just to assess and evaluate the likely significant effects of implementing the plan and reasonable alternatives to it. And, and it's meant to be a, a sort of a neutral document which simply identifies those significant environmental effects and the judgments that are then made in the light of that information are, are for the local authority which is then found in the plan. So it, why judgments have been made is not a purpose of the environmental report. That's for the council in the light of that report. Um, so unless there's anything else on this issue, um, yes, mention of likely significant effects, I think, brings us neatly on to issue 1.8 um, and the Habitats Regulations Assessment. question um, quite simply being um, has the habitats regulations assessment been undertaken in accordance with the regulations um, has natural England confirmed that the information set out in the HRA is sufficient and that the conclusions drawn are supported you're going to say yes and yes I am, sir, but I'll just hand over to Mr. Smith just to give you a little bit more detail about um, the discussions with Natural England. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes. Um, as per our statement, the, um, <coughs> the screening opinion has, has effectively picked up one site. Sorry, I didn't catch that. The screening opinion has effectively picked up uh, one site um, which might be affected, located adjacent to the Rye Meads Wastewater Treatment Works. Um, we agreed at, or we discussed a proposed modification um, to the plan with them which is what you will see on page three of LP3. Um, so if you bear with me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't know if it's just me but um, I'm struggling just ever so slightly to, to hear you Mr Smith. Okay. Um, yes there was a proposed amendment mm -hmm. in um, proposed additional modification in document LP3 on page three of that um, in response to Natural England's consultation response. Um, we note from their statement they are now looking um, for a sort of modification to the modification, if you will, and a slightly firmer wording um, around development post 2026 within the Rye Meads catchment. Um, yes, I'm not quite sure what I've done actually with my copy of the Natural England um, statement, but yes, th th they were looking for um, some refinement, um, if I recall. Is that right? That's correct. In their statement, yes, they're looking for a, a firmer statement about um, development post-2026 only being allowed where it won't have an adverse impact on the SPA. Okay, and um, what does the council say to that? Um, we would be happy to acquiesce to it to make sure Natural England you are... You think it's a jolly good idea and um, probably necessary for soundness? Yes. Right, okay. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, you said LP3. What, 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 what document was that? My apologies. That was the schedule of potential modifications that we submitted on page three of that there was some suggested modified text to policy SP11 and its supporting text. Right. Uh, where it says in response to comments from Natural England, um, reading their matter yep. one statement, I think is effectively adding a further sentence onto the end of policy SP11, 
about development post-2026 only being permitted where there's a satisfactory solution or words to that effect, but we can obviously work on that in the rolling schedule you've asked us to, to keep up to date. Yes. Um, having had a look through um, LP3, um, some of these I think are main modifications. Um, some aren't um, in all likelihood. Um, I, I haven't yet gone through an exercise of deciding um, which is which. So I think for the time being, um, this might in effect form the starting point um, for, the, for the modification schedule. Um, and then in due course, um, I, will, I will look through that um, and um, undertake a weeding exercise. For, for, uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for present purposes, we will put everything in and then you yeah. can decide which ones come yeah. out and which ones stay in. Yeah, just that, yes. And so what we propose to do is to finalise the um, policy changes with Natural England in, a, in an MOU, which will then present to the examination once that's been agreed. Thank you. Okay, so just, just for my um, note then, I have it, that's a, a main modification. Um, in short, um, in, in line with um, the, the change um, sought by Natural England. Is there anything else to be said um, about the um, Habitats Regulations Assessment? Mr. Burroughs. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sorry, Mr. Uh, sir. Um, I, I'd seen the objections. It's very difficult to find anything. I talk about a paper chase. Um, but I have seen the objections raised by uh, Natural England, that was in uh, uh, November 2016, I think. And um, I was, uh, I, you quite reasonably asked that the uh, information set out to Natural England is sufficient and that the conclusions drawn are supported and you've asked that Natural England should confirm that I must confess, I haven't seen anything uh, on the District Council's paper that, paper anywhere, that actually does uh, uh, have a confirmation of that, which is what you've asked for. Pres presumably, so you've got a copy yourself, but I haven't seen any confirmation. Um, I've, I've asked thus far um, if Natural England has confirmed um, that all is good um, in relation to the Habitats Regulations Assessment. I haven't um, explicitly asked that they do, um, although it's very nice. It is very nice when they do, isn't it? Yes. It's not always a cast iron guarantee, um, but, but it is very nice when they do. Um, so if, if I can have something like that from them, um, that would be good. Yes, we're, we're hoping for a, a memorandum yeah. of understanding with Natural England as to the final wording to go in the plan. Great, yes. And, and if they can confirm that um, that, that being done, um, then they are happy. Um, yeah, we'll get them to sign the document. Yes, yeah, great. May I ask, uh, just as a point of interest, if, if Natural England still decline, mm. what happens then, please? Because I'm, um, I know nothing about these proceedings. I, I'm not generally in the habit of answering questions, but oh, I'll I take that one. Speak, um, what happens is um, I, I decide. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Ms. Cotier. Um, yeah. I've got an email here that's a budget email from North Hart, so I don't know if this is the right place to um, put this in. It's, it's about Natural England extending the area of outstanding natural beauty east of Luton to Lily Bottom. Um, would this be included in this document that we're discussing now? Um, because I don't have everything to hand, but my, obviously I can't cover everything, but I think I want to raise this point now so that um, I can be told, yes, it is in this, or it is not. It won't be because it's not relevant to the Habitats Regulations Assessment. It's a different point. Okay, can you tell me when that will um, be so that I can make sure I bring it up at the right time? Um, the we, 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 yes, we'll, we'll look at when the appropriate yes. time is and, and let yes. you know. Yes, thank you. Um, is, is that something that we need to look at another day? So, so yes, it, it may be, yes. We'll have yeah. a look. 
but it's not relevant to legality. Okay, thank you. Okay, and, and that's because it's an AOMB um, and not a European site, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, a proposed extension to the AOMB. Yeah, uh, we, we just, just perhaps explain briefly to, to, to Ms Cotier why it's not, not relevant to the um, HRA. Um, certainly, the Habitats Regulations Assessments um, refer to what are known as European sites, um, which are identified under sort of their own legislation and regulations, and the AOMBs aren't captured by that. Mr. Might just come back, sir. Uh, the, uh, our foundation, uh, which is the Letters Garden City Heritage Foundation, uh, had announced about a year ago, I think, that the general area of Norton Pond uh, had become a, a European protected site. And uh, that doesn't seem to be, I think there's a statement I saw seen somewhere, sir, in North Arts District Council's plan saying there were no. Uh, European uh, sites, but uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I assume that the European protected site is a European Union protected site, which our foundation, I know, has actually had confirmed, so it is definitely a European protected site. That's not my understanding, but again, perhaps if we a short note and uh, 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 just confirm that point. I can provide point. the documentation. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know um, precisely where um, Mr. Burroughs is, is talking about or the, or the mm. status of, of that um, land in particular. So perhaps if that could just be clarified, I'd be, I'd be very Absolutely. grateful. Okay, anything else um, in relation to the Habitats Regulations Assessment? No, very good, thank you. I'm going to take uh, now then um, our adjournment for lunch unless there's um, anything um, to deal with beforehand. Uh, just a minor point, I think you, you called me Mr. Banner, it's Mr. Bamber. <laughs> You're quite right, <laughs> so it is. Um, yes, my, my, my apologies, um, I, I shall... Um, I shall be sure to uh, address you correctly. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, in which case, then, um, I make it um, 12 minutes past one. I adjourn the hearing to resume in this room at 2 o'clock. Thank you.